Are you recording? Because uh, you you had stopped. I am recording. I am now. All right. We're all good. We have a We're backup in case we need yeah. it, like yeah. we did last week. Literally yeah. last week. Which I'm pretty sure I posted, said when I posted. Welcome to Everyone Racers. There's a show designed for the world of low-dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of limit champ or lucky track dog league you run. SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips, tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur and girls racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet or we're lucky enough, and Chrissy, Chrissy, and Chrissy, and I give you just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. Jeff is still oh. working, but I'm oh. still mental. Yay. Oh. Well, but we're here and we're everyone we're racers. Here. Welcome to a Lola episode of our podcast. It's episode 294. The Lola 2 T. 294 was a, the successor to the T292 built for the European Two Liter Championship. Even though the series was dominated by Works uh, Renault Alpines, the T294 did take three class wins in the World Championship for and under the Two Liter class in the 1975 SCCA B Sports Championship. Not driving one of those 13 Lola T294s made in 1974. Check out your bingo card because you might get something probably not but maybe you will I, I think the venn diagram of people who own lola t294s and listen to the show are seven are physical separate. miles actual apart <laughs> and that's yeah. even to scale oh, so that well, is, yep. 294 yeah, must have been a slow news day slow number day uh yeah 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 it's once okay. we get to the 300 you 300, know, 300 has a wealth Yes. And then like early threes have got some too. We'll, we'll figure it out. But it's going to be you have to decide which 300 to do. There's so many <gasps> great ones. Yeah. Right and besides, well, I mean, also, Mercedes, there's, oh, go ahead. Besides having a 300th show, besides, I know everybody's excited about which car we're going to pick at 300, but also then we will have had 300 shows. So that's also something a little bit fun. I will so, still yeah. screw up that intro recording even on the 300s on our 500s. That's show. right. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, yes. Well, yes. Um, <laughs> Mental, tell us what you're doing. I uh, last week we were in San Diego, and a few days after that, uh, actually the very next day, I went and had uh, dinner with my racing buddy. Uh, he is sponsored by a local microbrewery there in San Ooh. Diego, Ale Smith, and basically what that means is they throw him a couple of kegs every time he goes racing and. He that's their stickers on fantastic the, the i yes. wish i had one of yeah, those that's okay so if you I, have a microbrewery and, looking at you buzzed viking uh we will more than happily slap your stickers on our car in exchange for beer that we will give away at, totally at every race that we bring uh your keg to uh and we are happy to do that because i've drank a lot of ale smith met them there for dinner and we had a, we had a lot of fun and then um friday after some meetings i did california the long way straight all the way up to san francisco where i met up with my local vegas buddies here chef and jp and all the guys from the dirt fascination the dirt eye and the rami show crowd uh in preparation to attend luft jp rented this airbnb it was 45 minutes away from the show in Martinez, California, literally on the top of a mountain. Oh my God, the most gorgeous thing ever. It was fantastic. In the morning, the whole thing's fogged in because San Francisco Bay, and then the fog would burn off and you'd watch it roll from the hills down into the green land everywhere. And there are wild turkeys making the calls. It was just so worth the drive. Totally. And, uh, you know, JP's hardcore. He's got a back date, nine, six, four. Uh, the last mile and a half of this is dirt and he JP just tearing up it slinging gravel. Doesn't care. Okay. It was awesome. Uh, our other friend, Dwayne wick, who's been on the show, Dwayne wick was tweaking a little because, you know, his car was dirty before he took it to the show, but they went and all, all took their cars unwashed from the drive from Las Vegas into the show, except for Dwayne, Dwayne wiped his down. We did that, uh, Saturday and then Sunday, they added a new dimension to the Luft cult, which they called air and water. So it was, Traditionally, always air-cooled cars, and then they started bringing in the water-cooled stuff. Uh, all the porn that I posted in the our Slack channel of the water-cooled cars. And um, little slide note: 
it, it sounds like a humble brag. It's really meant to be a humble comment. Uh, ran into Matt Farah, and I have not physically seen Matt since 2018 when we were all racing together and in a crowd with all of this hair and a beard. Matt Farah looks at me and goes, oh, God, dude, haven't seen you in forever. Wow. And over. I was legitimately impressed. He just even remembered who wow. I was. So uh, I know there's a lot of internet crap out there about, oh, Matt's all big time and he's a jerk now. He's totally not a jerk. He's just got lines that he has drawn around his personal life and he's got to do that to keep his sanity. I maintain that Matt Farah is a really good person and we get no endorsement to tell you to watch the Smoking Tire podcast. Uh, and, and Zach is also a lemons racer because he raced the uh, Sebring race down there. So uh, you should be checking out that show. And then uh, I chased JP's 964 all the way back from San Francisco, bonsaied it back into Las Vegas Sunday night. And because I'm old, I took yesterday off from work. And then today was a day of nothing but medical appointments reference. Wow. Wow. You're I'm so old. old. I'm so <laughs> wow. old. Wow. Um, okay. So anyway, and then actually like with everything going on, I, I have, I'm not Jeff levels of work, but I actually have earned my paycheck levels of work happening for me now. Oh, that's gotta be tough for you. Oh, it's man. it's a new thing. I mean, 30 years of working for the government and suddenly I'm actually you have stuff gonna, to do. I'm going to do what they're paying me to do. So oh. look, look forward to that. It's, it's actually legitimately cool. Interesting things that if you, oh, if you know what I do for a living, if we've had this conversation at the racetrack, I'll be happy to talk to you about it. it it's not classified. It's just boring. Uh, unless we've had this conversation and you're probably in that world you'd be like, Oh, cool. That does sound. Neat. Or you think it's cool. And then we just say, or you, you good know, you know, good just, just nod your head yeah okay oh whatever. cool naval cool. integration yeah cool all right that's go great. back to sleep now <laughs> um but uh so i know we have an order to this uh but this is neat because you guys actually have different stuff so chris uh yes this, when i see these three first three words there's always an interesting story uh, it's not that interesting that. saturday morning i flew to florida arrived well friday at, night we stayed in sydney and we, we went to a fun dinner and stayed in a fun little restaurant or little place uh downtown so that was a little different yeah, yeah. In, in in philly downtown philly in yeah, philly yeah. downtown philly and then you went at uh, the uh, litter ass uh, crack of dawn yeah. it wasn't even six, dawn yet 6 a.m <laughs> flight out of philly got to west palm beach got a ride up to my dad's house loaded their 2021 honda crv with their stuff and pointed north, made it to Roanoke Springs, North Carolina that first night. That's 740 miles. So that's one day of fly from Philly Woo! to Florida, drive from the airport to the house, load the house, drive 740 miles. So that was that was a day. Um, Good job. I, I do have a consumer tip, though, to know that a 2021 Honda CRV will not allow you to set the cruise control faster than 90, which is probably a good thing, but <laughs> it will not. Um, ah. Also, the uh, adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist on said 2021 CRV does an excellent job and really does on that long of a drive uh, help reduce driver fatigue when you're not paying. You don't have to pay 100% attention. You can pay 90% attention. You're just not making all those little movements as much all the time. Um, so that made it for, uh, I think, a safer, better, longer day. Um, then anyway, made it home the rest of the day Sunday Watched a boring F1 race in which we literally fell asleep in the middle. Literally. Fa <laughs> what? Because it was kind what? of boring. Whatever. My guy won. Oh, That's great. why it was boring. Worth, worth one. Decisively won. It was fantastic. Yeah. That's but why that, it was boring. The, right. But that was the first couple laps and the last couple laps. It's like, oh, great. Checko won. Um, yeah. Oh, you, you guys missed the entire part where Leclerc was actually leading. No, we saw that. No, no, no. no. Oh, it yeah, was yeah. the last like <laughs> 10, 15 laps, maybe. Like just lap, like lap, you know, 35 to 45. It's like, yeah. Oh, oh and I also missed the time when Ocon drove into the group of people. My coworkers had to tell me that because I was definitely sleeping through that. <laughs> so I was like, they were like, oh my gosh, Ocon. And I was like, what? Oh, I yeah. was sleeping. And uh, yeah. uh, the, the same wall, I want to say that, no, because turn one took a bunch of Formula Two cars. Everybody. Out. But oh yeah, I watched Formula. Yeah, well, yeah. I, oh, I, I did watch Formula Two. Oh, we watched it, the race. Yes. We did. Okay. Yeah, As, and it's it's a street race, and those walls are unforgiving. And it was interesting because Checo kind of grazed one with a rear tire, but also DeVries caught one and lost all steering, which uh, yeah. that was a, a brutal safety car. Which they say that was the one that 
basically he's, secured Checo's he, win. He's so, not going to be absolutely. around long. Well, sure. Alpha Terry is not doing so hot this year. And yeah. DeVries is not about. doing well yeah. for not doing well. So be sure. who knows? He's Pretty not doing sure. well for not doing well. That's yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because you could not do well and do well. I mean, sure. Yes. Sure. He's yes. not doing well. So. I like George anyway. Russell at Williams. He didn't do well, but he did well, for example. Sure. Yes. Well, and, and Albon at Williams is doing pretty well yeah. most of the time. So, I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you, know, you, you just understand your place and uh, don't wad the car up and don't cause giant, you know, safety car incidents. And All the above. That's how you do well, not doing well. <laughs> mm-hmm. that's why latifi's not here anymore i would again i'm just very excited uh because obviously my guy won and the lesson learned is never i should never bet on checo and checo okay. will continue to win and as we were about to watch even though the race was long <laughs> over i said to chrissy oh i should ask mental if you bet on checo because then we'll know who won and yeah. <laughs> And, and neither of us opened um open Slack before we finished the race, so we didn't know any. Uh, right. We didn't know anything about because it was so boring. The yeah. internet wasn't actually talking about it because everybody and, was like, "No, oh, right, that was here, a race." Here's, here's my new plan. I'm just going to start betting on Verstappen. <laughs> I go. mean, I'm okay with it. <laughs> he's uh, such an ass oh don't get me started keep going chris what did what yeah. did you get what else did you do? I also um got the warranty replacement shocks for the mazda this is now the second warranty set of replacements that we've had in this car for shocks that we bought when the car had mm, seventy thousand miles on it now almost 260 I thought this is number three Oh uh, no! So, well, this is the third set of shocks. It's the second warranty replacement. Okay, because I'm uh, with Chrissy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Two. Okay. I knew uh, it was set, it's definitely set the third three. set. Yeah. Okay. Your your post on that got some positive comments. So good on that well, one. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to that later. So anyway, those shocks are all reassembled. The springs and back in the car, uh, mostly. I don't have the front suspension back together yet. But but hopefully, they'll be coming soon. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, because we're still waiting on the axles, which is going to be a while. Anyway, yep. uh, beach cart is completely done and gone. Delivered. Chrissy's dad took it away. So we d- well, we def place, tried right? to uh, stuff it in the back of Snowflake with the third row seat still in, and it def didn't fit. So we nope. uh, loaded it all in. It's pretty darn big, and we couldn't close the doors. So yep. put it back in the garage and said, "Come back later because yeah. you need less things in your car." <laughs> it's a big beach car. I, that that is it. when when a suburban with barn doors can't swallow something. It's true. Well, it's because the third row is still in it. Yeah. Third row out, no problem. See, seats, and then and they flipped. Even at the, least one of the even with the too. third row row rolled mm-hmm. all the way up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it needed the second row folded down in order mm-hmm. to fit. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. That's a thing. Okay. Well, yeah. they now they learn that for when they inevitably take the beach cart to the beach in two oh. days, three days. Yeah. Ooh, and yeah, then it's nice. gonna and they can live at the beach and never have to go anywhere ever again. Pretty much. Um. So yeah, been productive considering I drove eleven hundred miles in that time. While Chris was doing that, I spent time with my family. So I had everybody over for dinner and hung out with them. We did some Amish country. If you're from around here or have any ideas about that. Uh, While I was waiting for Chris, I worked out a little and did some studying, watched the F1 race, and here we are. Not Whenever you say did little homage country, if you have anything like literally, I just, you know, do you put on a dress and just walk around with a bottle of liquor screaming? <laughs> Uh, most people didn't hear what you just said because Zoom decided that that was okay. a slur. It's, it's, or anyone who's anyone who's ever <laughs> yeah anyone who's ever seen the movie Road Trip, you you just you you put on a very conservative dress and a hat and you have a bottle of liquor and you just scream Rum Springer at the yeah. top of your lungs while you know throwing the horns up. Well, when we were driving through, quick story. Um, it was raining. It was kind of like off and off, pretty darn cold raining. And there's a a lot of I'll say hills. It's not flat. They're not mountains, but there are def- definitely some some pretty big hills. And uh, they many of the Mennonite don't uh, have cars. They might have one big 15 passenger van that they can take a bunch of people in one place to another. They're allowed. They have different rules about that. So most people are riding their bikes. And we saw many all girls when we saw them on Saturday uh, in the rain, going up hills on a bike with a basket with a a bucket full of stuff on the back of their their bike and we said this is the time where you question your religion 
And I'm very sorry if anybody, any of our listeners have any emotional attachment to, to, so, um, yes. so to we, Mennonites. Uh, but we have this, Mennonites listening to this podcast. Right? Yeah. The Venn diagram of the show <laughs> podcast. And, I think we have more Lola Mennonites. owners. Lola right. owners. further away than Lola owners. Yes. I meant if there's anybody that has any connection to them, I don't care about the religion. I just think that some of your rules are very antiquated. And I felt like I would just be riding this bike saying this I'm I'm over this. This is not <laughs> what they need is e-bikes. <laughs> well, sure, but instead they have probably yes. you know two, three speeds and they're going up big hills with stuff. I and just that's how you great. know they're Mennonites because if they have like three speeds and that's like legitimately a thing because the uh, uh, Amish don't even allow. Uh, I think it all has to be horse drawn. Yeah, like you know they're the Amish. They have different rules. Thing, the I I remember sometimes. eons ago twenty I want to say twenty sixteen mid Ohio. We were driving uh, to the track uh, from a house in Powell, Ohio, and I just it's it's 430 in the morning and I crest a hill at probably an unreasonable speed. And there is a safety triangle attached to the back of a buggy. Of a, bl a black box is what it is. Yes. Right, and literally and I'm thinking just the, the thing that popped into my head, having never come across Amish in meat space before was don't spook the horse, don't spook the horse, don't spook the horse. Mm. And I'm trying to get a a, a Volvo press don't. loaner hauled to <laughs> hauled to a reasonable speed without just spooking the horse. Them. Just also just don't hit them. I think their horses are pretty good at this because that's what they do all the time. They're not like real, they're not like you horse-drawn carriages in Disney, right? Like they're like that's what they're grown they up to do. Road, yeah. I've also well, I've heard stories from people that live in that area and it's it's less than it used to be but they like deliberately spook the horses on purpose because they mm. think that shit's funny and yeah, she's only people with diesel trucks right uh, um yeah, and ohio has a lot of them anyway okay this is not everyone well, mennonites here <laughs> everyone uh, Men we <laughs> welcome to everyone mennonites why are you listening <laughs> to this you're going to hell uh <laughs> you have zippers what <laughs> right dude some of the rules anyway all right you ready to move on there's an outside Okay, this is a fun story. I'm very excited about this. Humanity's need for speed knows no bounds. If it was a statement required more proof, a science guy named Chris Rollins designed a motorized trash can capable of hitting 63 miles an hour. Caleb Jacobs at The Drive tells us this sketchy story. Apparently, uh, the 63 mile an hour was a new record. To be uh, to be clear, it actually had, had to eclipse the mark of 48 miles an hour set by another go-fast gr uh, garbage receptacle. Rollins YouTube channel is where he gave the full rundown of the eight-week trash can cra crash trash can course <laughs> crash course excuse me I'm sorry emphasis on See, crash five times fast. right I didn't even get it out once he nearly <laughs> broke his neck during the final attempt at Redline Raceway pushing the machine's limits a little too far apparently a pull start 12 horsepower engine is enough to make the magic happen it's situated inside the can rather than uh, on front of or behind it, making it extremely compact and tippy. Rollins sat directly on top of it uh, during its run, an ill-advised but clearly suitable move for going fast on the drag strip. The only view out of the trash can is through a, a rectangular hole that Rollins cut be beneath the lid because uh, and because of the squatted seated position, he can close the lid, which he does for uh, he which he does as much for safety as a bungee strap uh, seatbelt would. There is no fail in this plan. I, I, I it's it's not appropriate garbage can if the lid didn't what blow we're talking over. about. Yeah. It's true. And exactly. it probably does because it looks like he's going for I I don't know if he's going forward in in yeah. which way is forward. The, the, with the one the, blue the, wheel because it's a tricycle gear. Yeah. And if you're watching the, this the side on YouTube, with the handle, right the now. side with the handle is the front because where the normal wheels go that you, you know, this is a normal yes, wheelie right. bin, like standard yep. wheelie bin. Just like your wheelie bin. The where the normal wheels go is where it looks like a go-kart rear axle. And I would, uh, I would. It looks like a suggest, drift trike actually. Yeah. I would suggest that this is a perfect thing for an electric power plant as opposed to sitting on a gas engine inside a <laughs> trash can. Just, just the Fumes, thought. exhaust, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. Heat, I think, and I think we may have inadvertently discovered Chris's next TIG welding project. <laughs> now, TIG welder is away for a while. Also, <laughs> I don't want to die, so let's not play that game. And it's electric. What could possibly go wrong? It's fine. It, it's Perhaps tippy. if you use if you use an aluminum trash can. 
Oh, okay. Old school Sesame, Sesame Street. Street. And then on your <laughs> helmet, you get one of those, uh, like they have the Muppets now where the motorcyclists have the ears and everything. You get one done up like Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> Themed so, and riding a trash can. If you're bored next winter and mostly <laughs> drunk, here's a project. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Chris Perkins at Road and Track breaks the bad news for anyone that dreams of taking their classic slow car to the ring. Beyond its crazy 13 mile plus layout, what makes the Nürburgring Nordschleife unique is its Touristenfalten sessions. This is why I gave him this show. Yeah. This one. Oh, right. yeah, Proper. During these tourist rides, anyone with a driver's license can turn up in an appropriate road car, pay 30 euros, and run in the lap of the legendary circuit. Previously, TFs were open to all sorts of different vehicles, so it was possible to see a Porsche GT3S, a GT3S on track with a tiny old city car or a bus. Or all kinds of things. Now, the ring mandates that any vehicle participating must be able to do at least 130 kmh or a little under 81 miles per hour. So now for pretty much all new cars, no issue. I mean, even France, as crazy as they are, their speed limit nationally is 130. At least half the cars you see on the auto routes, they're going to do more than that. Except for those two CVs, they just can't. But you should for some ask. classics, it's some classics going to be an issue, like the FR mentioned, two CVs. They just or can't. A 914. <laughs> the 1.6, <laughs> maybe? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, hey, what's also interesting is the ring officials are looking at a car's original registered top speed. So in other words, when it rolled off the production line. So Woo! That means All right, so I'm just off. under that wire. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you put in a hotter motor in your, so you put in a Hayabusa motor in your 2CV, you're an amazing person, but it's still not going to be able to run, even though now it can exceed 80 miles per hour, which is probably good because you're going to die. Um, and so uh, no apparently rules. also currently no trash cans. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, well, you can't sense. go that fast in a trash it, can. It didn't go 81. So yeah, I, I exactly. guess that's it. So a new rule seems to reflect both the increasing popularity of the TF days and the increasing speeds of today's road cars. So you can get an entry level hot hatch, which are often out there. They can do 140 sharing the track that the cars, they barely can get up the hill between Bergwerk and Klosterra. That's dangerous. So I mean, these aren't meant to be full on track days, but you should be, you know, let's keep it safe, everybody. Which is you don't want a GT3, the GT3 RS. Yeah. You need to slow down a little bit. Yeah. You need fair. to slow down. Yeah. Speed creep finally makes its way to the Nuremberg rink. On the Apparently. subject of, well, literally nothing. We're just going to go back to Lola's. Um, <laughs> you guys know we talk about this all the time. Give yourself an opportunity. Pop over to Racing Junk, enter or sign up for that year long membership and then enter the code pod 23. And what that's going to give you is access to their pro level membership for half off. And you don't even need the pro level membership to check out this 1966 Lola. Now this is a T 70. It's a Mark II, but it's a spider, which is awesome. Yes. It's $250,000. So it is just has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Everyone racers other than I feel like, the Venn diagram of our listeners who will appreciate the look of this car is a circle on top of a circle because this is a gorgeous looking machine. It is. Yeah. Yes. I before I even read in your notes, I was looking at the ad like that goes from four. It was at four thirty. Yes. Oh, okay. And that's no, where I was going to no go. With. Problem. So this car started out. <laughs> right. it it's started like I'll give you a coupon. Hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and then they dropped what it down to three hundred sixty thousand dollars, and now it's at two hundred sixty-eight or two hundred fifty. And the guy even says in the ad, "quote Make an offer north of two hundred thousand, and it might be yours." This is the best price, authentic '60s Lola oh T70 gosh. available okay. on the market. And let's be just blunt: this car is totally worth two hundred thousand dollars. It is gorgeous. Obviously, it looks so comfortable. <laughs> it only has to be comfortable for 20 minutes. And when you're passing everybody, you're comfortable. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Uh, okay. But that does go back to our thing. Check out racingjunk.com. Through, do some joy scrolling. Nothing about this ad makes you unhappy, makes you politically angry. You never want to curl up and start like throwing balls of paper at your computer mm. screen because you disagree with some sort of thing on there. No one hates Lola's. Unless you're like just a diehard antique Ferrari 
uh, enthusiast. And even then you're like, eh, it's still, or you just bought one and it broke down and now oh, it's you... going to break. It's a Lola. <laughs> so That's that would make reality. me sad, <laughs> you know, but you bought the Lola, you've got a mechanic who can fix all that stuff. Uh, check yeah. out. <laughs> you're buying a $200,000 Lola. Yeah, the rest of it is is not 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 a problem. Yeah, you've yes. got somebody working for you that's like, oh, cool, Lola. All right, I can do that. Yeah, all right. Ah, yep. so if we move on to our next section called upcoming crisis, lemons is at Hallett in Oklahoma for halitosis. Thirty nine cars, which I mean, this is the first race there in a long time, so it takes a little bit to build. It's up, the first race there ever because ever. they were. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. For the longest time, Hallett, uh, they had a single point of entry where you had to cro- cross the active raceway, and that oh, yeah. doesn't work for limits. They finally built no. a tunnel last year. Oh. I was an instructor at Hallett. I love Hallett. It's a great I know. That's what we thought that you've, they've been there before because you love it. I do. And anyone's going is going to have a great time. Connie is going to be there. She's a wonderful human being. And I've said this before. Her office is not in some high pie in the sky office. Her office is in the grill. And when they get shorthanded, she stops doing racetrack owner stuff and goes back there and starts helping behind the grill. Salt Great. the earth. 39 cars, 11 are BMWs. That is so boring. boring. It's boring. It is boring. It is boring. Two Miatas. But everything else, is very, everything else is very interesting, this though. Is, yeah, only two Miatas, three Hondas, and one of which is a CRV, which is great. <laughs> yes. oh, we, need, we need more uh, small crossovers and lemons. Uh, one Porsche, a Fiat X19, so which 11%. I am ninety percent certain is our buddy Cam Lopez, and that he runs with that team uh, in that Excellent. Fiat X19. Aww. Yes, a uh, Chevy Monza. Oh hell Excellent. yes, a BMW E21 with a Chevy V6. Not Mercury, boring. Mercury, Mercury Bobcat all day. A Rabbit, a Datsun Z, AMC Hornet. This is good stuff. Yeah, outstanding. Okay, Lucky Dog is at Willow. Uh, we do not have the um, the list of cars there, but I'm sure it's going to be that's awesome. My fault. I just I forgot to email Charlene. She's always been very responsive, and I just got busy. Good luck Sorry. to all of them. So no problem. But AER is at the Glen. Sixty six cars. Thirty four of them are BMWs. Uh, that is more so boring. boring. So boring. 50%. Three Miatas, three Hondas, nine Porsches, and the Keystop, Keystone's Cop Volvo. Great. Cool. All right, now also, to the fun stuff. Yes, yeah. starting this, this I, with tomorrow. Yeah, by the time everyone hears this, starting tomorrow, the Lemons Rocky Mountain Breakdown Rally. This has been fantastic. 21 cars. And the best part is the Rocky Mountain. None of this is in Colorado. We talked about this a uh, couple. Yeah, we like, talked about, about Jeff. This is yeah. this is a pretty hardcore rally. Like, yeah, this is yeah. Wyoming. Mind you, how big the, the West yeah, is. Idaho and you know, oh, yeah. Chris knows. I mean, I've, He's driving. I've driven a lot of these places, yeah. and a lot of this is talk about no support. Oof. There's nothing. Oof. There is nothing. <laughs> All yes. right. Um, some some interesting ones that we have. I'll I'll, I'll go. A couple here. Uh, one of them is called a quest for fun in a 1990 Chevrolet Corvette, which I uh, I understand doing the rally in a questionable C4 Corvette. So uh, hopefully they have better luck than we did. And this, team is, this one's a ragtop, if I'm not mistaken. I think I saw this better. on Facebook. Uh, yes. Apparently this team has done six rallies in other Corvettes, a couple of rentals, and a bitch in Oldsmobile wagon. They also race an NC Miata in the South. They're from Florida, so they shipped the Corvette to Wyoming wow. for this. That's our wow. smart for them. Smart plan. Very okay. Smart. Okay. Uh, another one that I that I thought was fun was the Gummy Gears 1972 <laughs> Mercedes Benz 350 SL. Oh my god! That was the first oh, year of the R107 yes. body style. Oh my god! If that breaks down and you decide to abandon it, get a hold of us at Everyone <laughs> Racers because that's like a day from me, and I will go and get that thing. Just you don't have a trailer available. I will. There's Rent a you haul near him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Rent one. <laughs> to get a heart to heart Mercedes uh, SL all day long. Yeah. Oh, I like that response. Apparently, okay. apparently this uh, this is run by a guy who's an OG Lemons Rally guy who's won several rallies. And this Mercedes is apparently exceptionally crappy. So perfect oh, for you, Mental. So that yeah, can go that'd be to great. And die. Uh, <laughs> Yes. And the, and the third one that I thought was great here is the Micro Machine, a 1991 Suzuki Alto Works RSR. 
So this is a Japanese K car. This is a 660 cc little oh, hatchback. My God, like, it would fit in the trunk of my Miata. It is. Oh awesome. my God, Pretty where much. are you gonna get? Where are you you're never gonna get a part for that? You're not. But also, you're doing. There's a lot of open space in the West, and this is a little city car. This is gonna be doing the whole thing at 7,000 RPM. Which it's a, yeah, it's, it's it's a ninety we Suzuki. Oh well, I just screamed, so I yes. I rev limiter to eight <laughs> yeah. is what I just was doing. It's a ninety yeah. Suzuki. It will do oh. seven thousand RPMs all day, maybe sixty miles an hour. Yeah, it is very cute. It's this tiny, cute little hatchback. Oh, yeah, oh, goodness. So those are the three that I, that stood out to me on there. They were great. Now I, I naturally I picked El Derte. Which is a '68 El Camino. These are my people. Now he's a this this person's won uh, Lemons, Colorado, with an Audi. Knows his way around crappy cars. Has rallied a '63 Buick and got engaged during the 2017 wow. California Rally. So wow. this is probably a properly crappy car that will do very very well. I also like the rod knocking rookies, and this is a 1973 Mercury Marquis. I have a deep old school high school connection to those old mercury marquees i had a mercury marquee wagon a 78 mercury Mercury wagon and these are four rookies and a 73 mercury and i'm quoting eric or jeff here whoever put the comments in there gonna be awesome now if you're concerned about finding parts for a 73 mercury i feel like they chose the right vehicle in the middle of nowhere they're going to be able to get parts for a an fe block ford just have uh, to pull it off of a car in a desert somewhere. Which, oh, yeah, I got one of those out behind the right? barn. Come on. <laughs> All right. And then Team Jackie Tetanus in a 69 Firebird. I agree with the sentiment typed out in the notes about this car. And it is, and I quote, as it is spelled, hell yeah, border. Cool. Okay. Uh, I chose a few here. I skipped commencement for lemons in a 1963 Ford Ranchero. What it says on the team name, same family as the 38 Chrysler. Hella sweet. And there's a, there's a bunch of good one on here. And I just couldn't go without this one. The Viva La Volva and the Sausage Party in a 1965 Ford pickup lovingly called the Crown Hick. The Viva La Volva famously brought the first Subaru Brat to the Lemons race. They ran again with a different Brat but that had a Miata under it, and they haven't see, seen them in years. And so here they are. Super awesome. And super awesome as a, as a qualification from Eric Rude or Jeff Stobbs. Right. That is, those are, those are heavy words. That is, a, that is, that carries reputation right there. It's because those guys have seen it all. It's going to be awesome. They sure have. Good. Okay. Well, good okay. All of those involved, uh, most of them should don't survive. die. Yes. Don't die. Please, 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 no one die. Uh, and now I did not put this in the show notes, but I'm going to throw this right here because we're talking about upcoming races. As you may know, and if you don't, the four of us are going to be emceeing the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix in July, obviously in Pittsburgh. Now, from the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix, folks, they plan on live streaming a lot of the coverage, which will be done by one or a combination of the four of us. In order to live stream that, they need a thousand subscribers. Uh, YouTube has like that qualification. Good call. I'm going, I'm going to ask our listeners to please, because they're not going to spam your account. They're only going to be doing things during the Vintage Grand Prix. You might get a couple of notifications for some upcoming promo videos that they'll throw in there, one or two of which might have our voices on there. But I'm going to ask all of our listeners, please subscribe on YouTube to the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. Then go to your spam account because you have a spam account. We all do. That's how you get free stuff when you sign up for things. Sign that one up. And then if you've got another account, just sign emails up for the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. These are good people. They're car people. We're starting to get more and more regular emails from them. And it is a group of folks that just really want to put on a very special event. And then it's going to give you, if they get to a thousand subscribers, an opportunity to watch the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix, which is just a great event hosted by hardcore gearheads and you'll be able to watch it live this summer so please use all of your gmail accounts or your email accounts and go and subscribe on youtube the pittsburgh vintage grand prix there will be a link in our show notes 
What idea. Thanks for bringing that up. I appreciate it. I subscribed this week. I did so, too. Yay. Yay. Okay, let's have feedback time. Okay. So I posted some pictures of a uh, hashtag void, uh, warranties I didn't void. And some of you had some comments for me. Uh, Matt F said, if you drive slower, you won't break as much. Fiera and Brian Matt F said, would know about driving slower. Right? Well, yeah. that's fine. I believe these people. And then Fiera O'Brien said, stop using shit ass track motive parts. Um, but they lasted. So whatever. A day. <laughs> just that one. <laughs> just that one. It's all right. We're they're going back, Fiera Brian. Don't worry. We're getting that refund from Rock Auto. Heck uh, yeah. In response to our last show that almost turned any, you know, turned into everyone pays taxes, Eric K said, Yeah, this year I paid. Uh Ugh. Uh, Ugh. Dave, Dave C said he already spent some on a new fire bottle as his aged out. But then I was like, but safety though. Good yeah, on you, Dave. Dave's like, no, I want to buy something ridiculous that I don't need. Oh well. <laughs> uh, Al J also bought a scooter on Marketplace on Monday because walking around the pits is for chumps. I totally agree. Well done. That's Al. a great theme. I feel like walking in the pits is for chumps. I posted a picture from a, uh, a, a our adventure at the Luft. Uh, we all had matching lab coats with the Dirt Eye podcast on the back of it, uh, and I posted a picture and said, "This is our next album cover." And Dirt Fascination, which is the organization, commented, "When we go platinum, Mental will be able to afford shoes." They were flip flops. I'm recovering from heel surgery. I'm letting the wound breathe <laughs> oh all right that's a oh. fine excuse i they, didn't they know that know. even you my own proclivity. wife even my own wife was bagging on my footwear she, you're not taking those to the race when we go to europe are you just just so okay i mean you have is, that what you, is that how your wife sounds really no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes so i'm you, married to dr girlfriend i mean i'm just saying <laughs> You have a proclivity to walking around without shoes on and sometimes sure places, you do. So, yeah. I don't like shoes. I hate yep. socks. Yeah. Don't even well, get me started on pants. <laughs> right. <laughs> Stupid social norms. Uh, anyway, uh, Tim B on YouTube said, Hey, use the money to check off something off on your, I must do in my life bucket list. I if you don't this. have a list next time you're having a bad day, stop what you're doing and make one. You'll <laughs> feel better. Tim B, we love you. Attitude. Every word of that is just really solid life advice. Uh, Michael K said, my tax return will fund three days of my 16-day motorcycle tour of New England, starting the day after your next podcast. Well, so, fantastic. Tomorrow. Ride safe, Mike. We know you will because I've seen you geared up. But yeah, good on there. And Carlton S. quote, I bought a boosted board when it came out, and then I bought a Suron to replace my gas pit bike when they came out. When I saw the e-foils, which goes back to Chris talking about the battery-powered uh, surf foils, I knew I had to try them. Last year, I rented one down in Rhode Island, and it was a total blast. It is really unfortunate that they are so expensive, but man, they are fun. I would be worried about getting sick on it after mastering it, though. I guess I'll let you guys know when I get that five-figure tax return. Yep. Right. Sick, sick, he said sick of it instead of sick on it. There's, there is a notable <laughs> No, because I, I, I think it's it's a slow undulation. You've got sea legs, but some of us right. that live in the Midwest, yeah, just a, a slow up and down, up and down mm. is a good way to see your lunch a second time. I'm pretty sure you did say sick of it, though. That's what yeah. this oh, says. That I, is, that oh, is, yes. I'm sorry. I you missed. said sick that's okay. It. You he can sick sick, sick on it. it. He says I just sick didn't of want it. Us to, to say that Carlton was going to go get seasick. Anyway, <laughs> you know who probably wouldn't get seasick riding her electric foiling surfboard? She would giggle if she Chrissy's once mom. she got the hang of it, though. Oh It'd yeah, be, yeah, that would be amazing. Yes, we'll let her try it when we get that six figure, five figure tax return. Yep. <laughs> we're not going to get. Okay, great. It's my time. So now there are lots of people when we go to the track that retreat back to the hotel and that's fine for some people. I understand, but I think some people are really missing out on the experience of staying at the racetrack, especially at a lemons event. There's a lot of good fun, camaraderie, hijinks, stunting and exploding, just, you know, good old fashioned fun that happens when you stay at the track a little later you don't have to worry about driving anywhere all those things drink so, a little bit more yeah 
you know, it's it's just a great atmosphere. That's all. And I would argue also that uh, the cost of a hotel for certain people that might be considering dipping a toe into our uh, passionate about amateur endurance racing, that's a, a fairly pricey venture depending on where the track is. And that might be something that is precluding you from doing so. And so, yeah, we're going to keep talking about these are just different ways to stay at the track. And hotels also near racetracks, especially in some parts of the country, are incredibly bad. Like, you know, Button Willow. There's, they're terrible. No, no. Uh, uh, high, high plains, plains race. Oh God. There aren't any there. Well, no. there just aren't any. It's like an hour there's, away for there's one hotel down the street and it is completely occupied by lemon staff. Cause it's like nine rooms. Yeah. Even New Jersey's not great. You're not yeah. in a good part of town like at all. And you have to go pretty far. It like, seems like you're in a town, but you're not close to good places that yeah. you should yeah. go. Thompson. Yeah. Now there's not much there. New yeah. Hampshire's got like one down the road, like a red roof. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, the okay. lemon staff has to drive like two freeway exits up. Barbara's yeah. got a great one out there. In fact, I've like stayed at the track and then driven to a party at the hotel yeah. there at Barbara. Uh, but Barber. that's Barber. That's yeah, Barbara has a good one. You're absolutely right. Uh, you yeah. know, if, if you're if you're at Road Atlanta, there's the Chateau Elan. Yeah. But uh, yeah, outside Still, of uh, that. Yeah. Um, see, yeah. The, the Willow, choices are often, Sonoma, the choices are often poor. Mm -hmm. So. Everyone Think about staying out. at the track. So if we're going to talk about different ways to stay at the track, the pros and cons of each, the gear that you need, um, both for a basic and, and you know, level up setups, um, things to bring different levels of seriousness to make your life better. So there's, there's lots of ways you can do this. And if you haven't stayed at the track or haven't done it in a while, or maybe you want to upgrade how you stay at the track. That's what we want to talk about today. So we're going to start off with mental talking about as the only person on this, on this screen who has owned his own RV, he can talk about that because that is the the you're living life high on the hog version here when you go to the track with your own RV because you know you've got it all right there. Mental, tell us more. You do. Now uh RV ownership, let's just start out. There's no <clears throat> if you're if you're getting anything newer than a certain year, there's no way to do this cheaply. Uh and even folks that I know that are financially well off they will still beyond a certain range, leave their RV at home because just getting it to the track becomes a cost prohibitive thing. I am going to talk about all these things and I would hope that my co-host will jump in at a moment's notice. Please. It should be For known that I'm, I am selling my RV because I no longer use it in the same capacity that I did. And it is, it's, it's, it's the, the return is not my worth my investment anymore. Chris. I find the best way to uh, experience an RV is to have a friend with an RV, <laughs> preferably multiple. Yeah. And there, there's, there's validity to that. Um, and then if you're considering RV ownership, I would encourage you to look at the tracks that you are going to and what kind of facilities they have for RV hookups. Uh, Sonoma does not have very good ones. Button Willow actually does. Button Willow around here is probably the best. Uh, Chuck or, uh, yeah, Chuck Walla has nothing. Willow Springs, nothing. The Perump, nothing. So every yeah. track I go to, you have to boondock. And that does just doesn't make a lot of sense, which is one of the things that's leading on there. Now, the, the pros of that is you've always got air conditioning and you're always there. And you, most of the time, depending on the size of your RV, have a means to get your car to and from the track. The also downsides. Electricity with most RVs that way too. You do, you do. Uh, and, and, and out here, you know, you, you, you start looking into the solar, that kind of stuff. Um, and even if you're not using it as, um, uh, you know, primary sleeping quarters for your team, it might just be you. It does provide if the weather gets extreme cold or heat, it provides people to come to a place to acclimate. If they're getting dehydrated or they're getting frozen, throw them in the RV for a little bit and uh, they can, they can get back to a normal temperature and it just keeps everything a little bit. The last time I used the RV was the 25 hours of Thunder Hill and everyone had different sleeping quarters. There were just a handful of people that were sleeping in my RV, but it was where the team ended up going and we parked it next to the track because it rained all weekend and we could keep track of the car laps. We could see the pits where we were and we could respond quickly, but we just weren't going to stand in the rain because it's just miserable. Um, they are prohibitively expensive to operate. They are prohibitively expensive to some to ensure and, um, 
I, I I don't like discussing financials, but just to give you a scale, the insurance I pay on my RV would fund four lemons cars a year, not to to put them in a field, but I could I could probably build them, uh, or or have them. Uh, so it's it's, and I'm not paying a lot for insurance because mine's not just not that bad. So if you've got a if you own your own company and you can write that off, that's, that's a good way to go. The V10 that is in mine, it is a gas class powered uh, C and the other RV that the three pedal mafia has used for a while is also a V10. I think gets the best I have ever done was 13 on a flat chunk of pavement at a reasonable speed. Usually it's sub 10. And yeah, when class gas, A is always yeah. sub 10, I think they usually get like eight. Oh yeah. And you, you do the math on that on a 400 mile round trip when gas is five something a gallon in the summertime it's it's ugly pros you've got all your gear it's all right there you always have space you've got uh you know and everyone else can throw your throw their gear in there and there's a place to hang it up and uh you uh depending on uh, how far you travel sometimes your team can just leave gear in the rv and so then they don't have to worry about packing that especially if they're traveling to there um, it's a bear to drive. If there's construction, you've got to negotiate that. That's how, um, if it's windy crosswinds are great. <laughs> I remember driving your RV and it's heavy, heavy thunderstorms, putting a quarter turn of steering cross just to go straight. And that is how I crossed the Mojave desert in December. Uh, there was a, uh, California's having some interesting weather and I was literally crabbing at about 70 degrees and it ripped my window and some other stuff off. You can go back and listen to that episode. I, I had so much damage. It's still not fixed. It's still sitting at the RV dealer getting work, uh, all the repair work done to it, which is the other thing about RVs is every one of them are built in a vacuum. So except from like the frame and, and chassis aspect of it, every part is unique and impossible to get. And, and, and to buy a part from the RV dealer, you have to pay shipping to the RV dealer, which, as a consumer of a lot of auto parts, insanely blows my mind. Pros, you've got a place to cook. Cons, you have to bring all that crap with you. Pro, There's a lot of maintenance involved. Yeah, it is. Like there general. is a ton of maintenance involved in RVs. And because they're all effectively, literally coach built, um, they're delicate. Even even the more hardcore ones are delicate. So uh, yeah, if you're if you're routinely going to be driving it more than 200 miles and you're not going to be living in it, I'm, I'm, unless you find a heck of a deal on a used one and you're prepared to do a lot of work on it, just, just, you know, sit down and do all of the math. Ours had other ancillary purposes. We've lived in it twice because we relocate and we moved and it was really good to get things out of here. And the dogs, I usually had dogs with them. They always liked being in there. So if you've got pets or you've got loved ones that come to the track and don't race, it's definitely a pro for them to have a place to go and get away from the noisy, loud cars. I could go on and on and on about this, but this yeah. isn't everyone RVs. They, we've had that show 17 times. <laughs> We're going to talk about some other options that we have all done. Um, one of the good things I do enjoy about the mild weather out West, even in the summer, once the sun goes down is you have a stack of other options and those are, you know, tents and trailers and, and, and even just the garages themselves. A lot and of we'll, tracks frown on people yeah. sleeping in the garages for whatever reason though. So not so much out here. They, really? uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, button willow, um, yeah, it, it's just kind of accepted. And, uh, also you see the same thing as Sonoma. If you can sleep in a garage at Sonoma, because they're the open NASCAR style, it pretty much stays noisy. Yeah. most of the night because someone's wrenching on some or maybe that's why we don't do machine. it the, the time spank built a three-bedroom house in, in the garage at sonoma yeah, that, that i think that had bedrooms in it though it did yes. yeah had, had furniture living room you know it was yeah. very nice um, actually in, in, then, Mar in marin yeah. county there they could, could have put that in the market for nine hundred thousand dollars oh. <laughs> not even not even batting an eye but right? again uh then uh willow springs the oldest operating racetrack in the united states um, no garages. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a nice, easy climate too. You know, the sun, not a big deal in Willow Springs. <laughs> Deep All in right, the heart so of California meth country. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's go with the simplest version. A tent. Mm -hmm. We've done this plenty of times. We've done all, mostly in the West coast. Cause when we go travel races, we bring all our camping stuff. So 
yeah, you can do it as simple as a Walmart tent and sleeping bag. And I highly recommend a camping pad, though, and so not being right on the ground. That is that yes. is kind of the basics. Um, yeah. Go ahead. I'll say everywhere. That's not a Western thing. That's not a Midwest thing. That's not an East Coast thing. Um, your options at every place. Sometimes there are some nice you know, lawn areas, uh, especially on the East Coast. But most of the time, you're either on pavement or rocks. Mm -hmm. Dusty rocks. Yes. If you're in on grass, it's going to be cold. In the middle wet. of nowhere in a windstorm when it at night. Yep. Ask me how we know. It works. <laughs> it works. Yes. I highly recommend a tent a little bigger than you would bring backpacking, though, because you need Completely. a little more gear and stuff like that. Uh, if you get a tent that can fit an air mattress, that is luxury, basically. But do know that the air mattresses uh, do not, um, they kind of suck the heat out of you because the air is not a good insulator in there. So it will be colder if you have an air mattress, which is good in the summer. Not so good in Button Willow in December. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and get one. Uh, yeah. Always get one slightly bigger than backpacking uh, as well, because it's, it's, you're, you're good. If you're using this as to get away from the weather, the walls will close in on you and you're just going to want a little space to kind of just go, oh, this is awful. So chances are, yes, you might also um, are we moving into trunk? What's trunk I mean, car? Oh no, tent. trunk car. No, no, no. I'm saying, so I'm sorry. The good thing about it. So when we've traveled across the wet to West coast and gone racing and stayed in a tent, um, you have the option of keeping some in a rental car or some other place. So it's a little bit easier to say, okay, well, if I need your race, who doesn't have to necessarily be in the tent with you, you can keep some of your baggage in other places that will stay dry. So you don't always need all of the stuff that you're going to bring to live in the tent with you. So I think that helps a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and that's at least what we've done with sharing the space in, in uh, rentals that we have plus a plus a tent. Gives you a sometimes space. a year in some tracks, it's actually quite lovely. You get those just just cool enough warm summer nights that you can have the airflow, and it's actually kind of lovely. Just when do, do we have that? We haven't, but other people have. Like okay, June, <laughs> I was just making day. sure. Well, Button Willow is miserable hot during the day, but it is quite nice at night. Yeah, like June at New yes. Jersey. It's usually oh, yes. just right at night. Like that's sure. a nice race to camp at. And there's plenty of room on the grass. There's plenty of power. You can be, you, you, that's a great one for, there's good places to go yeah, that way. Yeah. That's like, a great that's one a good, for tenting. That's yep. a good tent race. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good, good but call. I just, yeah. Would recommend a little, not get the smallest one and, uh, and have some kind of padding that'll help you there too. But in general can be a very nice way to go. Just make sure you have a rain fly or a tarp or two, just in case. That's all. And if you are not a camping style person, like you're just buying a tent to uh, stay at the track, talk to some locals, know what critters live at that. And a keen example is CMP because there is a 70% chance you're going to sit down on fire ants. Interesting. Those things are everywhere. At CMP oh, okay. Okay. And notoriously unpleasant. <laughs> mm. they, they're attracted to electricity oh, so uh apparently when like when you're welding and stuff the fire ants are like oh hey and they wander up it's great if you're wearing a kilt while while welding <laughs> from what i understand all right so tent cool great entry level way consider yep. especially if the weather's right all right if you're so let's over see. 40 just just write this one off you do not want to be in a tent if you're 40 years old i don't know it's not or bad i'm over 40 i but, hate it all right so next step you've you're going to the track, you're towing a race car, potentially probably have a truck. Or if you're not towing the race car and you're showing up, you showed up in a car. Can you well, let's talk about staying in your truck and or car. And this varies depending on the size and accommodations of your truck and or car. Now we can talk about it with our Suburbans, which, you know, Suburbans are lovely to sleep in. We've all quite, quite fantastic. I, I have camped with three dogs. Actually, yeah, three dogs and a suburban and a cot. It was lovely. Mm -hmm. And we're we're specifically going to have experience with the GMT eight hundred line of suburbans. That's what we all owned. 
Uh, it is very nice because it is a flat floor when all the seats are down. That is important because like in our new Escalade, the floor is not flat when all the seats Correct. are down. It it angles from the front to the back to allow the third row to fold into the floor and whatnot. So um, take that into account that when you're sleeping great. because you, you can slide downhill if depending on the material you're, you're can't, your stuff is made out of, uh, or you don't, you don't want to sleep with your head down because then you just end up with a blood rush and that's <laughs> not good either. So consider the, the the slope of your floor there. But it uh, is big uh, enough if you needed to go that way. So if you have an open oh, trailer yeah. and you need to drink, you need to sleep in it, uh, it's plenty I mean, big. So the Cadillac was plenty, was fine, just not ideal. Yep. Uh, I will say that that size car, a double so a double mat mattress, air mattress, fits perfectly between the wheel wells. Anywhere a four by eight sheet of plywood would fit, well, really four by six and a half, the double size air mattress fits perfectly. Like we've you know, gone to HPDs and at home, set up the mattress in the back, put all the bedding on it, put everything in it right there and just got to the track, boom, ready to go. So that, that has been very convenient. So Suburbans would recommend, but even if you have a smaller kind of car, you don't need too much. But I would recommend some kind of padding in the back in general. Uh, air mattresses are obviously great. If that's not going to work, camping pads work well. Uh, or even something as simple as go to Joanne Fabrics and get some foam. Well, you know, or a crack on a craft store or something. Get some foam, cut it to fit in what size car you have. And really anything that the seats fold down, you can pretty much sleep in. All right. Just a matter of how big and how much stuff and how many people you have as to how comfortable it's going to be. Um, we, we covered a you Camaro care about your... that was turned into a camper. So absolutely. Right. And whether you care about your legs being straight and things like that, which, you know, I would prefer doing that. But uh, in general, though, if you put your head toward the front of the car, where it widens out for the back doors, gives you a little more room to, to work if if, uh, if your car can do that. When the Suburban, we liked having our head at the back by the tailgate because on nice, nice nights, you can open the glass in the lift gate and get some good fresh air through there. That was great. Um, other uh, things one... to suggest, uh, some covering for the windows so that you can have them open and let fresh air in, but not let the bugs in. So I've seen people stretch some kind of mesh over the tops of the doors and then close them. One thing we did is I just took some window screen that I had and opened the door, shoved the window screen around the door as much as I could, shut the door so that the windows door sealed the, the window screen and then put a piece of magnet strip on the bottom to seal that up. And that worked great. I've seen uh, uh, other solutions that are a little more localized with your, basically you have like a hat or just a mosquito net over your head. That can work too. Okay. A little silly, but, but sure. Like, well, if you have a b mosquitoes, then they bite yeah. your arms. We also had but, a 12 volt, we had a 12 volt fan that it was, it was a window suction cup stuck to the window, plugged into a power outlet, which is usually in the cargo area of most uh, wagon SUV things. And that was nice to have a little air movement back there too. So would recommend that. That was good. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if you, you don't, do, uh, minivans, minivans are also quite excellent. And everything they, they just both just said are fantastic because you know, you can either remove the third row or it all folds into the floor and there's lots of space. You can even stand up in those. It's a great thing to get as a rental car if you're traveling to a race as a minivan because Heck, it's a yes. changing room, it's a bedroom, it's an everything, it's out of the you way. You can load all your friends when place. everybody's cold and you need to get somewhere and nobody has a place to go, like you, none of your friends have an RV or there's no garages. Yep, good place to load everybody in. A little lantern of some kind is nice to be able to have some light on the inside so that you're not uh, having to potentially burn down the battery in whatever tow vehicle you have, depending on how, how old that is, whatever car that is, consider that. Um, and just consider the weather. You know, if it's going to be, if it's going to be cold, dress appropriately because your car is going to get ambient by the time you wake up Indeed. and it's hot, you're just going to sweat <laughs> unless you have different, or unless you just run it. If it's a rental. Hey, run it, run all night. Air conditioning will be great. <laughs> The, uh, the upside of both of uh, these options, everything they're talking about too, is depending on how long you are traveling to this race, this gives you an option for pull into a well-lit, shiny truck stop, park, and get yourself a power nap so you're not driving uh, while oh, exhausted. Oh, that's a nice idea. Mm -hmm. And that's also an advantage of a traditional RV as well. I have mm -hmm. spent many a night tucked up into the uh, either on the couch or on the overbed 
uh, nestled between two semi trucks at a Travel America up and down the East Coast or uh, else in the middle of the country. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. So now next, you have an enclosed trailer for your race car. That can be a lovely place to stay. It is basically a big dry box. So beyond that is up to you. In theory, you it's a how. dry box. In theory. Most of the time. Fine. Let's assume it's dry. So now beyond that, how nice it is, is entirely up to you. I mean, we do have, so you can have a nice fifth wheel one that has built in living quarters, which is like having an RV essentially that uh, also has a spot in the back. Um, or you can have, you know, let's talk about what's kind of most people have, which is an enclosed trailer in the 18 to 24 foot range and you need to sleep in it. Great. I think first thing that's nice to have when you're doing that is some kind of climate control. Now they make the RV air conditioners that go in the little hole on the roof. You have to wire those in certainly, but that is, that is a way you can go. It's really simple and easy. Those are usually around a thousand dollars. Um, they attach to the hole that's already there. So if you can wire that in, that's a really simple way to go. Um, we did something a little different. I got a, um, a portable kind of rolling about air conditioner setup that just needs a hole in the side of the, of the trailer to work. And that can be turned backwards because it's just a heat pump to provide heat when it's cold as well. One thing I would recommend though, on those, this uncle Dave gave us this recommendation. I heartily agree. If I were to do it again tomorrow, this is what I would do is get one that has two hoses, not just one, because ours has one hose for the exhaust. And it assumes that you're going to have enough you know, air leakage in the house you're using that it's not going to have a problem. But in a well-built trailer, you create a vacuum on the inside of it entirely. So when you go to get in the door with the air conditioner running, you have to crack the door, pull just a little bit until you break the vacuum to be able to get in. Otherwise, you have to leave the roof thing open, which is pulling hot air in. So, so you, you've basically made a Tupperware container. Yes. <laughs> yep. It works. Excellent. It gets cold, but get used to two hose one because then it has an intake hose for the heat exchanger and an, out, an exhaust hose for the heat exchanger and then a separate cooling loop inside. So it's not creating a vacuum. Uh, so would hardly recommend that. Or just if it's cold in the winter, space heater or two goes a long way. Make it make it nice in there. All right. I'm going to steal some of our safety advisors thunder. When we say space heater, we are talking electric because anything that runs on a fuel in a confined space you are asking for trouble, not just from Thank a flammable aspect, but from a suck the oxygen out of the room. And then you don't notice because you're already asleep and you die. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, I, next thing is nice I have to used have those little, actually, you guys have used my little space eater. We did last time. A yeah. <laughs> yes. little satellite dish looking one. Yeah, we just used yeah. that at um, where we just were pit. Yeah. Pit. Yeah, totally. It's really quiet, warms it just enough. It's great. Uh, but along those lines, insulation really is nice. That's a, that's a much bigger project though. I don't, you know, if you're, if you're just kind of dipping your toe in here, don't worry about the insulation. That's, that's a big project, but uh, at least clean your trailer before you go, yeah. you know, give it a pressure wash, you know, wipe some of the grease stains down on the side. If you're really feeling ambitious, a new coat of paint goes a long way. Um, but just make it a little, a little nicer that way. Grab your some kind of lighting. Get all the grit off the floor. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and then we found a, a thing that we did this last time was great because you never get all the grit or oil off a, ra a race trailer floor. You can't. So we got a 16 by eight foot outdoor rug, like the kind of people put out in front of their RVs at a campsite. We get to the track, everything's out of the car, roll out this rug. And now we have a clean, usable floor. That doesn't have all the grit on it. It doesn't have all the oil stuff on it. And it's just a nice floor for you being in the trailer. We have a little shoe tray right in the door. So you can put your shoes in and not track the grit everywhere. Uh, so there's a way to kind of really transform the, the floor from transporting stuff to a nicer spot. And uh, also worth, worth looking into if you're out here, one of the tracks in Southern California or the desert or Arizona uh, you might have to be a little obnoxious about shoe wear in the place where you're sleeping because dust gets everywhere and just make people take their shoes off when they come in and out. Yep. Small amount of discipline does goes a long way to make it a nicer place. Um, and last thing is you got to sleep on something when you're in the trailer. From what I understand, hammocks are not a good idea. Like uh, we're talking to Kurt and Craigers when uh, Kurt was getting his trailer built he said, oh, we want to be able to string some hammocks across the trailer. And they said, no, don't do that. 
not how the trailer is designed. The, the walls on the trailer aren't designed for inward loads. They're designed to hold stuff up, right? But they're not designed for, for the kind of weight. I mean, Kurt, Kurt is not a small man. And uh, the amount of weight he could put on, on you know, what are, it, it's admittedly some small framing that holds these trailers up. That's pretty significant. So they suggested they not do that. So uh, cots are a, a simple, easy way to go. Uh, air mattresses, even better. Um, but hopefully, uh, we, we have found that get a good air mattress, not one of the ones that's right on the floor, but get one of those super nice, extra thick ones, maybe with the headboard even, so don't lose your pillow. We just got one of those this last time. It worked out great. It was a nice place to sleep. I would, uh, on the hammock article, I've just never had luck sleeping in a hammock through various survival situations with the military. And uh, just it's it's comfortable to relax. It's terrible to sleep. Uh, your neck is just usually kind of, uh, at a weird angle. If it's cold, you're basically exposing yourself to ambient air from all angles. And, uh, it's on that. And, um, I've, I've, even with expensive air mattresses, I've had terrible luck with air mattresses. I'm a lot rougher on things than you are a cot, a good folding cot. However, I've had the same folding cot now for 21 years and it is been to damn near every racetrack that I have been to, and it has taken any number of abuse. And uh, if you want to put a foam thing on there, or you just got a good thick padded sleeping bag, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's hard to break a cut, really. <laughs> it is. It is. If you do, it's during setup and tear down. But uh, yeah, a, a uh, you go to one of the one of your reputable sporting goods stores and find yourself a good foldable cot. Cool. So this is all the stuff about where you're going to sleep, but there's so much else that can help elevate your race. Now, if you're showing up and someone else is already making your food, great. You don't really have to worry about any of this stuff. That's the way, that's obviously the best way to go is uh, uh, arrive and eat. Um, but uh, if you want to you know, take care of this for yourself, there are some, some ways to go about it. Right, Chrissy? Yep. Uh, you just were on a roll, so I was letting you go with it. I just figured you'd just keep talking. So no. yeah, just one of those nights. Um, you could have a grill. There's a couple of different sizes. So we have both. Uh, we have done a tiny grill. So like a camping grill, a little tiny, you know, um, gas powered with a little gas grill, um, you know, the, the screw onto the bottom. We have used those before for just two of us. It's worked okay. Um, you can bring a pan and use just the burner that's on the bottom or use the actual grill part. Um, but we also often bring our Blackstone. So we have a, it folds out, has the uh, the legs that fold out. It's got a nice grill top. Um, a, so I'm sorry, just a flat top. And the flat top's the way to go rather than a grill because you can cook everything. So you can make your eggs in the morning, but you can only make burgers at night and steaks and all that good stuff. So um, we the Blackstone folds up so easily. So it's really like probably an okay way to just, if you're bringing the, especially if you have the enclosed trailer, easy way to bring that anyway. Um, it's just a little bit bigger and a little bit more cumbersome, but the tiny grill has its limitations as well. So both have their pros uh, and cons because you got to clean them both really. It's one of those, like, you know, it's, sometimes it's, it just might just be easier to put up the black stone because it is already just folds up against the wall and you don't have to put it back in a box and all that good stuff. So um, both are pretty good, but of course then uh, don't forget the things you need if you're going to use a grill to cook on it. So what I typically do is, you know, I have, I have boxes full of stuff that to bring uh, my paddock when we have a full setup and ma many cars and multiple people. Um, but obviously don't forget a spatula and all those good things. So if you're going to stir something, make sure you bring a spoon. And uh, so you don't, uh, you don't end up with, with just having your little plastic, um, all of your plastic ware to eat with. And that's all the only fork that you brought with you to flip your burgers is the, the fork that you're going to use to eat it. So uh, making sure that you're bringing those couple extra items and Typically, you could just bring them in a bag, and then you could also just, if you have a, you know, something like a Target plastic bag, you just put them back in there and then wash them when you get home. So you can kind of uh, do it if you're just doing it with just you guys or you know a small group of group of people. Um, you can do it so that you don't have to bring a whole lot of stuff with you, but enough that you need to cook and do the things that you need to do. Yes. But yeah, you know, we've gone as simple as the little tiny one burner thing that you said before. 
um, and a pan and like a spatula. And that's it. Like that's as simple as, as it can be. If you have just one or two of you it really works out nice. But obviously if you bring the Blackstone and a couple other things for the rest of your race team around, they're going to be pretty happy because that's a great way to eat, cook and eat. In the same way that an RV might be enough just to get you a seat on a race team because you've saved them a hotel or anything like that, a good cook surface, if you've already had it, don't make this investment thinking it'll get you a free seat, but a good Blackstone grill uh, <clears throat> also will get you a lot of favor in the paddock. Uh, if other people are trying to cook, know the track regulations that you primarily go to. Some allow charcoal grills, some only allow propane, and some will allow none of that. So do some research on that one. But um, both my RV and my Blackstone, well, I have a knockoff Blackstone, but my my flat top cooking surface have gotten me a lot of very good well in the paddock from people that are willing to trade or help or do whatever, or just bring you alcohol to please may I use your cooking surface so that I can actually make dinner because we thought we'd be able to do it. In one of those little $20 Coleman charcoal grills and everyone is hungry and angry. That's a shame. You live and you learn. Oh, sure. Yeah, definitely looking up the, the rules. That's good. Um, another thing that can you can't go wrong with is bag chairs. They're easy. You need them. Uh, you drag them around. You bring them to different people's paddocks, um, but you need somewhere to sit. So you need to bring bag chairs. Um, they're usually pretty cheap. Buy them at Walmart. We have one from Walmart that we bought, I don't know, 20, uh, 15, 15. Yeah, about 15 years ago and we still you have it so um yeah just get one that's it's an easy one anything else that we're missing uh here i find a table of some sort to be quite helpful whether it's a folding table like you have at home or i got my new favorite one is the honda crv table spare tire cover for those that don't know every honda crv from 97 to like 05 came with a spare tire cover that is plastic that has fold out legs on the bottom. They are available in junk guards. If you get to them when the car gets there soon and they are a great size, good height, they're lightweight, easy to maneuver. They actually fit perfectly on the cargo area of a C4 Corvette who knew. And, uh, it's just a, a handy little size. It's really small, easy to bring everywhere. Holds just enough stuff. Would recommend. Good one. To the end of these items that sometimes are, you know, you're going to use for a long time or sometimes just consider a single use item. And that comes down to not the durability item, but how much money you have invested in it. And I am notorious for this. I work for the government and the government throws away a lot of chairs. And it is to the point where the last three organizations that I belong to before they throw chairs in the dumpster, they call me. And I will show up with anywhere of 15 or more stackable, foldable, not even, not even foldable, just stackable, good, durable chairs. And I bring them to the track with zero intention of bringing them home. I oh. took them to button willow and I actually went to the staff. I said, do you guys have any use for these? These were good, like the big cushy office chairs, but they were style dated from the nineties and the staff was like, Oh yeah, dude, we'll totally put those in our break room. Those are fantastic. And then I had a bunch of stacking. You just chairs. fill the back of your RV with chairs. 100%. Okay. Yep. Okay. Repeatedly like okay. notoriously. In fact, when I was in San Diego and I went by my buddies thought he still had eight of my chairs that I had gotten to get, they were going to throw them away. And now I'm, wow. now they're not in a landfill and they weren't occupying a dumpster. And the ones that I did bring back from the track that time that people didn't want, I put on Facebook and I had two different churches, very small churches come to me and get the chairs. And now they're on an email list where if I get more chairs, I take them to the track, I bring them back from the track and I give them to this church and everyone is grateful on that. <laughs> so uh, with tables and chairs, there's an opportunity. If you have, if you've got an old truck or something like that, and you don't mind throwing a bunch of chairs and there's a chance to upcycle a lot of this kind of stuff Aww. and you can talk to the track staff and maybe they have a use for these things folding uh folding tables like those old school elementary school lunchroom things those things take up a lot of space and sometimes people just don't want to deal with them anymore and when they get ugly and that's a great shop table and a great shop thing and you use it once and then throw it away but or you just 
there are people at the track that are like, I can absolutely find a good home for that. And you can do that. So there's an opportunity to do everything Chrissy just told you about uh, and not have to spend any money. Wow. And you're actually almost kind of helping out with, you know, reducing our landfill load. That's amazing. <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, I, Cause I added everything that's in here under small. Yeah. Fly, but but this one's it. This one's the next one's a good one. All right. Uh, you need a lighting source. And if you're flying or you're traveling or you're trying to do it in a small car or a small rental car or something like that, uh, map out the Harbor freight between you and your track or the Northern tool or wherever it was. And they usually have something very cheap, very affordable, very available. And you don't even have to bring it back. Um, towels and hygiene. Items. Oh, hold on, 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 hold on. Yeah. Lighting source. Hold on. Hold on. We have more on lighting source. Go. You do. I wanted to talk about the thing that Jeremy had. Yeah, talk about it. I don't know what it is. Oh, uh, I think it was a um I forget the brand, Milwaukee, DeWalt, Ryobi, one of those work light that ran off a battery, a normal tool battery, and it was basically the sun. It was the sun. Yeah. And it took no battery. It did not even dip down. I think we even left it on all night. And it didn't even dip down into the next se cell of the battery. It was the sun. We were like, turn, we have to put that around the corner because it's too bright. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's kind of bulky. It's pretty heavy, but it lit up the whole paddock, not the whole paddock. I'm sorry. Our paddock space, uh, plenty of light. So get, go to the, yes, whatever light source that was, it was amazing. Um, also headlamps. You can never go wrong with a headlamp. Uh, we have all sizes. We have the, you know, $5 one, but we also have the one that you literally can take spelunking. So the one that it has like a battery pack that's like this big, um, like the size of a grapefruit on the back of your head. Um, so, but you can never, you can never go wrong. Throw it in this, the center console of your car. And if you don't need a cool, but if you do, especially if you have your paddock is your paddock space is far away from the restroom and you have to get up and you can't see and it's dark. Um, and there's plenty of, of paddocks that have one street light. And if it's right next to an RV and that eclipses your, your, your light away from that, you're in the dark. And I'm just thinking of some of these, like where we were paddocked in Buttonwillow, uh, CMP has one street light and that's it. I mean, like, Lighting source is huge for for paddock spaces, but even if you're going by yourself, not every place has a street light or something like it that's illuminating the place that you could be staying in, especially if it's a packed weekend or you know, you just you get there late or early and don't realize that your space has no light. So I think lighting source is actually a, a good topic. Absolutely. Uh, and on the headlight one, I'm going to suggest one that is charged by a USB because most cars these days have a USB port in their center console. Plug it in your center console, leave it there till you need it. It'll be ready to go. I bought one of those off some targeted internet ad. It's been fantastic in my, and it literally, it'll like fold up and fit in my back pocket. Is it the yeah. one that's the strip one? It is. It, and, I and, bought and this. If, and I, I have the option of making it uh, motion on and off. So you can have a, a uh, seizure. Yeah. You, you karate chop in front of your face. It goes on. You do it on there. Oh, which, yeah. it's, it's not blinking. So you're having a seizure. It's the, ah, uh, you karate chop the light. Yes. That's not what you said. And that's not what I thought you were doing. So <laughs> cool. Yes. Uh, okay. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Right. No, that was, uh, thank you for, uh, for yeah. letting us stop there. That's a good one. Yeah, that's, all right. Totally. Uh, yeah, your towels, uh, towels and your hygiene items. Now, even at tracks where there's no showers, Willow Springs. There are no showers at Willow Springs. There's the House of Charmin and the House of Charmin 2. And it's a series of bathrooms. And then like they they have like a sink out front. Depending on where you are, I don't know, like Willow Springs, you're gonna get really, really stinky to the point where you're offending yourself. And even if it just comes down to you're doing the, you know, the sink hit wipe down, have a towel and have some soap. So you can just make yourself be less offensive while you're at the track. Uh, a good 
a good clean towel will just really change your mood after you wipe layers of grime off of yourself, wash your face, wash your hands up to your elbows, and then just pat yourself dry with a good clean towel. You're really That's- selling this experience. This is good. <laughs> I Remind love me not. racing. I love racing at Willow Springs, but it is a god awful place. And then if you want to stay at a hotel, you're still driving 45 minutes down the road to a crack house. It's a a place like Willow Springs. I would recommend maybe one of those bag showers. So it's it's like a five gallon black bag, solar powered. Right. You fill the water, you put on the roof of your car or on the parking lot. And then at the end of the day, you hang it up somewhere and let gravity work. And you have at least something warm to rinse your stanky. And you can even, you can even do like the little, they have shower curtains that go around them. And you, you know, depending on your level of comfortableness, you could do the, you know, bathing suit shower, but you're still just making yourself not reek, uh, to that point. Uh, and then, um, for the exact same reason, um, if you've got space in your luggage, a robe, not like Michael who walks around wearing one as fashion. And let's be honest, he owns it because he's usually got a cigar, but, uh, just, just having a robe to transit from one place to the other and not get your, I'm about to put on clean clothes dirty. So you're carrying those, but I also would like these things that smell very, very badly to not be around me. I can leave those in there. Having a robe is a, uh, it's a good option. Uh, you know, shower shoes and stuff like that, depending on where you're staying. Uh, are uh what are we missing a lot of stuff a lot of this stuff is a, this, this is a pretty good start this I'd is say. a good one yeah so this is this is trying to get your get someone's foot in the door this is this is level yeah. like one and two i mean we yeah. can go a lot further down the rabbit hole here but sure. this is a good start you're you're new you're thinking about racing and sure you can pay the entry fee and you've got all the protective gear but darn it it's just so expensive to be at the track and i'm not going to eat everything at the roadside grill these are some options and if you've done some things that we missed or there's some essential equipment that you won't show up at the track without get a hold of us on any of our social medias, comment, any of that kind of stuff down the doodly do talk to us, tell us what we missed. Tell us what we need. Tell us what indispensable item and Jeremy, tell us what light that was. We will put a link up to it. If you got it on that Amazon, we need to become like an Amazon affiliate and we will like, you know, <laughs> make a small. Product. No, it was definitely, I think it was DeWalt. I think it was yellow. So that's why I think it was a DeWalt and it was a box and it was like a small box and one and had a lamp on it. it was yeah, the nice is that it was a, a ambient light source mm-hmm. and it was maybe the size of a basketball. Yeah. Oh, very nice. And so it was nice. You could, you hung it up on the um, RV awning and set it on and it just created a nice, you know, great. A- ample light area. It's wonderful. Most of the other like ones it. I see are kind of just like a, a um, direct lighting source. This is more of a lantern. That was good. Mm-hmm. Okay. As long as you have a place to hang it, which we did yep. at the time. So you don't always, but cool. I think, I think that's a pretty good list there, but looking so. forward to hearing what everybody else is saying. I'm sure we're missing something. Yeah. It's this, remember, this is, this isn't the advanced level, you know, the, <laughs> the, the typical 3 yeah. p.m. traveling circus and road show. There's a whole lot more that goes on, but, uh, you know. Yeah. When don't you get to, let, when you get to hot tub your, level, that's a different yeah. story. Exactly. <laughs> don't let your fear of not knowing where to sleep. I think uh, one of the times initially you guys had reserved spot for me in a rented camper at the track, but the party was still going and I had flown on a red eye and I was dead dog tired. And I think I slept in a Nissan Sentra. Uh, so <laughs> I've, I have done it all. And I awoke the next morning to uh, scribbled on the um, driver's side review mirror. Cars are cool. That's about right. <laughs> yes. if, you get, if you get drunk enough, anywhere gets comfortable eventually. <laughs> sure. Uh, but yeah. don't let your don't let your friends uh, pass out in a, in a fire ant hill at CMP or the lake of poisonous <laughs> snakes. Anywhere else, yeah, you're you're probably pretty good. Make sure they're good not idea. too cold, too hot, not going to die. That's Do funny. we have any idea what we're talking about next week? No. No, but we'll see. We'll figure it out. We usually do. Yeah. We're you, yeah. Yeah. We're usually pretty good about this. And if you've got a show topic, let us oh, know. Dear. But I'm stealing from the closing for my co host who already has a okay. speaker in his hand. Okay. And he will tell us everything I'm about to tell you. No, you said it's, you're stealing it. I'm stealing Actually, it. Actually, no, I forgot. I, I, if you have more to say, why don't you say it, man? Because I forgot to load the, the song. Oh, good. You <laughs> have, have a sp- the song. Check on your don't bingo subscribe. card. Yeah. Chris has Chris has uh, 
problem with his wires. There you go. Oh, wait, go that's subscribe your to the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. It's in our show notes uh, on YouTube. And find every cheesy email. Break into your parents' email. Subscribe. Just, just get everyone to subscribe so they can get a thousand subscribers. It's going to be worth it. What mental said. So yeah, thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, camping, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. Totally free. Then go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating no matter what you think. Five stars and tell us why. If you have any it's questions been a while. or show ideas. Somebody, come on, yeah. give us a five-star. Right. It was like a year and a half ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah. They've all, all, everyone said it already. Anyway, questions or show ideas, drop us a comment. Facebook page, Everyone Racers. Email everyone.racers at gmail.com. Text 484-243-0455. Mental, it, mental's dying to hear from you. Find Should us on Instagram, junk. Twitter at everyone.racers, YouTube and Facebook, Everyone Racers, even Reddit at slash E1R. Thanks again. Which I just put a bunch of pictures from Luft Cult, so you can go see a bunch of Porsche porn on E1R, on our slash E1R page. Even better. Keep that shiny side of your Lola up, unless you don't have a Lola like everyone else, then just keep the wheels down. <laughs>